Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's have a look at the major US indices. And uh, this is as of Friday's uh, closing price action. And we'll start with the wave chart here of SPX. All right, so at this point, I think we're uh, kind of standing on the edge of a cliff, ready to break down in uh, the anticipated uh, third wave down or possibly a C wave, but uh, currently favoring it to be a, a third wave within a larger uh, impulsive decline. Uh, but as of today's price action, uh, we're just poised to basically break down almost immediately. Um, and, I'll, and I'll get to why that uh, seems probable uh, in a bit here. But first of all, we'll just uh, re-highlight, okay, we got our five down from the uh, September peak there into our October low. That was a nice five down for either a larger one or a. We've done our W, X, Y, uh, truncated double zigzag, um, either wave two or wave B. Uh, some people could make the case that this is an A, B, C, a flat, but it doesn't uh, look particularly good as a flat. You got a three, three, you could call this a little five up, uh, but a flat, you'd really want to see this be more of a double bottom and more of a double top. So. You could split hairs whether this is a flat or a double zigzag, but uh, the directional implication is the same, and that's that we're coming down here in the next uh, impulse sequence down. Um, now, I just want to point out a couple things before getting into the closer uh, wave patterns here on the most recent uh, decline. So our MACD moving averages are still below the zero line, and it uh, looks like our... 12 period is now uh, starting to cross below the 26 period. So a little bear cross starting and also the trend is technically down as long as we're below the zero line according to this indicator. So that's helpful information. And also RSI, um, we, we basically had a phase change in RSI. So in the uptrend, RSI of around 40, between 40 and 50 would serve as support on pullbacks within the larger uptrend. Now we you know, we changed that RSI, got extremely oversold. It's called a phase change. And now on our corrective recovery, we're, not, we're unable to break that bear market resistance on RSI, which is between 50 and 60. And you see here, we went as high as uh, 56, and then most recently we went, went as high as 58. So right in that bear market resistance range between 50 and 60, and now failing off of that, heading back down towards, uh, you know, potentially uh, getting into oversold RSI again on the next uh, wave down. So I like that RSI signature is favoring, uh, you know, a bearish shift in, in the mood here, as is MACD. And obviously the uh, Elliott wave implications are we have five down, we have three up, and now we're looking for another five down. It's as simple as that. Now I'll get into the, uh, I think the hourly chart would be a good place to start. So from our uh, most recent swing high up here, uh, at 2818 we have a pretty clear one two three four five down and that's likely for a larger wave one uh, you know potentially of three or of C and then we had this ABC up and as far as uh, Fibonacci relationships go I believe it was roughly a 50% uh, retracement uh, let me just grab that fib tool so roughly a 50% retracement and let me just uh, display that. Yes, yeah, so 50% uh, retracement would have been 27.1086. We went as high as uh, 27.0854. So that's uh, a near perfect 50% retracement, ABC up, and now we're coming back down convincingly in uh, what's likely a smaller degree, um, if I can just, smaller degree third wave of a larger uh, wave three or wave uh, C, right? So we got our one down, two up, coming down in three, possibly of three or of C. So that's the bottom line there. Um, and closing near the lows of the day there on Friday, but we'll get to the candlestick chart uh, fairly soon. Uh, okay, now get back to the daily. So downside targets here. Um, let me just lock this so I can pan around. 
downside targets will our equality relationship between uh, this move down and the next move down off of the uh, corrective high that comes in at 24 77 78 so that's probably the first level to look towards uh, upon confirmation of breaking the October low it looks like we're uh, very close to doing so and uh, after that the 1618 relationship comes in at 2269 uh, and that would make it more convincing that it is in fact a larger wave 3 and not a uh, larger wave C right um, and then at that point we'd ex be expecting some sort of uh, larger degree fourth wave bounce before making another move to the downside in a fifth wave um, but that's getting a little ahead of ourselves here and okay the triangle uh, scenario that I've highlighted before where we're still in a corrective triangle uh, B wave that's not completely out of the picture yet but it's it's now unlikely enough that I'm not even going to bother looking at it uh, unless we just immediately find support here and uh, reverse once again off this uh, low 2600 range but I doubt it um, I mean how many times can you test a level before it breaks I haven't really heard of uh, quadruple bottoms and that's basically uh, what we're kind of looking at here if it were to do that so highly unlikely even triple bottoms pretty unlikely it's usually either a double bottom or a double top or uh, or it's gonna break that's that's typically how it works okay uh, that's probably good for the wave chart here and we'll go to I think there's some candlestick chart uh, now there's some interesting things here so other than the wave uh, relationship what here suggests that we're about to you know fall off the cliff here and finally break our October lows in this kind of 2600 area of support uh, well we're not oversold yet on the oscillator although we're heading down sharply so that certainly leaves the door open to further uh, decline uh, we're, we've actually started doing the bear cross or the uh, death cross now so the 50 day simple moving average is now starting to cross below the 200 day moving average so death cross in play at this point um, now we're just finding resistance on the daily T line once again and the three T line is crossing below the T line nicely and we're closing well below both of those so the momentum there as far as the moving averages certainly uh, favors the downside uh, as far as this being a specific candlestick uh, sell signal not really anything there it's not a bearish engulfing or anything like that although it is a very weak day and rejecting off the T line as resistance but uh, what I think is more compelling than the daily chart here also we're, we're breaking this channel uh, this little base channel that I drew over here uh, we're getting out of that bottom uh, channel line and also we are breaking the November lows although haven't broken the October lows yet but I think that's coming uh, pretty soon here okay now what I think is more interesting is on this weekly chart now that the week is closed out and that is a big nasty bearish engulfing weekly candlestick and uh, engulfing last week's uh, price action there and once again unable to get above the weekly T line on a closing basis and in fact uh, closing well below the weekly T line and the weekly 3 T line and both of those are just in bearish alignment and heading lower and uh, so this is a strong sell signal weekly bearish engulfing after a period of you know congestion consolidation now we got a strong sell signal on the weekly chart um, I mean if you look at this uh, weekly sell signal we had over here that was a nice uh, signal that bearish engulfing uh, this one still had some downward follow-through although that's where we started our bounce once we made the lows here although we did still go lower after that uh, bearish engulfing and now we have another bearish engulfing uh, after this you know congestion so on the weekly certainly bearish uh, as far as the signal goes I'm not gonna look at the monthly yet uh, because nothing's changed as the month isn't closed yet although I guess we could just take a peek at it not that it means anything until the month closes but uh, currently working a terrible bearish engulfing on the monthly as well although the month isn't closed yet but the week certainly did and that's why I'm looking at that week with uh, interest there and also uh, firmly rejecting the 50 week simple moving average uh, once again uh, unable to close above it um, so that's notable everything's just kind of in bearish alignment there okay so that's SPX uh, oh, I guess before I move on to other charts there 
Um, I'm still holding the spy puts. Um, they're performing extremely well, and uh, I, I don't really see any reason to close them. Uh, I would definitely consider uh, closing them if we got above this level, so the high of Friday. Uh, and that would be at 2708.54. At that point, I'd consider that kind of a stop level to be bearish against. And, uh, well, I showed on the wave chart before, but that is our most recent corrective high, our ABC up uh, high here, uh, that 27, uh, 2708. So that's a good level to be bearish against as far as uh, defining your risk. Um, more importantly, it would be 2800. 18, although I just, uh, highly unlikely we see that again, uh, possibly for quite some time. But uh, still treat it as a trade, define your risk. Right now, bearish against that, uh, what level did I say, 2708? Yeah, bearish against 2708, at least in the short term here, until there's some new levels to uh, utilize for risk definement. Okay, so that's SPX, we'll go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the Dow, negative day, well below the 200-day moving average again. Uh, no death cross yet on the Dow, although that will come if we uh, continue on lower uh, for long enough. Uh, all the moving averages in bearish alignment rolling over to the downside, well below the T-line. Three T-lines cross well below the T-line. Not oversold on the oscillator yet and heading down, so that opens the door there uh, to further downside. And we did break the November low on the Dow, yet to break the October low, although that should be coming soon, if I'm on the right track here. And as far as the weekly goes on the Dow, uh, weekly, not a weekly bearish engulfing, but uh, obviously just a down week. Rejecting the weekly T-line as resistance. Weekly 3 T-line, crossing well below the weekly T-line. And uh, hang on, got to get the weekly chart out. <clears throat> That was still the daily, my mistake. But uh, yeah, weekly, not a bearish engulfing, uh, although certainly a negative week. Uh, again, unable to uh, close above the weekly T-line. Weekly three T-line is uh, well below the T-line. Everything's just pointed down. Um, so very much a similar setup here on the weekly uh, to the S&P. Uh, as far as monthly, we'll just take a peek because we're not done the month yet, but uh, just to see how it's currently looking. Uh, currently working a monthly bearish engulfing after last week's, uh, or sorry, last month's monthly doji. So that certainly looks bearish currently. Uh, nowhere near oversold on the monthly here on the oscillator. Maybe I'll point that out. So certainly uh, plenty of room to go on the monthly chart before you'd be considering that uh, we're oversold on that time frame. Okay, that's probably good for the Dow, for the daily here. And uh, yeah, definitely looking to take out those October lows uh, soon. And I think once they get taken out, Everything's going to come down uh, quite abruptly. Okay, NASDAQ Composite. Uh, let's have a look at this. So NASDAQ Composite, oscillator coming off the overbought condition, nowhere near oversold. So that leaves the door open to further selling. Um, you know, using the daily T-line as resistance still. Daily 3 T-line, cross well below the T-line, the closing below both of those quite convincingly. Um, we got the death cross already in play on the NASDAQ. So the 50 day simple crossing below the 200 day simple. We'll go to the weekly chart. And I believe we have a bearish engulfing weekly here on the NASDAQ as well. Yeah, we do. Uh, again, unable to uh, hold above the weekly T line uh, ever since we started the decline. And this week was no exception, despite intra week getting above it, obviously on a closing basis. Uh, completely unable to hold it, served as resistance, uh, weekly bearish engulfing. Uh, so, the, you know, the simple engulfing rule implies the next three to five candles of that time frame will be in that direction. So the next three to five weeks will be the implication here. And if we look back over here on this weekly bearish engulfing, we got one, two, three, four weeks traded down. Obviously on the fourth week, we started that reversal though, but intra week uh, still made a new low for the, you know, subsequent four candles after that bearish engulfing. So if that uh, happens again, we could be looking at another several weeks uh, of trending down. Uh, and that could possibly be in our wave three scenario before we bounce up in wave four, uh, if that's the correct wave count. 
So weekly looking nasty. Uh, monthly, let's have a peek. Despite not being done the month yet, we'll have a peek at it. And working, working a real ugly uh, monthly bearish engulfing on the NASDAQ after that doji. And uh, certainly looks poised for bearish continuation currently on multiple time frames. So that's probably good for the NASDAQ. And, uh, okay, I think we'll have, head over to the VIX there, have a peek at that. And, okay, so VIX. VIX looks to have restarted its uptrend. Um, intraday high on Friday of VIX was uh, 24.71, so a little lower than Thursday's 25.94, but uh, clearly, starting to trend back up on VIX. So that is, uh, you know, that's bearish for equities. If VIX is in an uptrend, that doesn't typically mean that uh, stocks are going up. That typically means the inverse, that stocks will trend down opposite to the trend of VIX. So if this, uh, if this persists, then I would expect it to just complement the weakness in equities. Now, if we really get a, a strong third wave down, we should take out the previous VIX high there at 2884. Okay, and uh, so SPX just also want to point out. So we have a, a bottom here, a low, a low, a low, a low. So you could almost argue that we have five tests of this range here, right? So one, two, three, four, five tests. Uh, so never mind a quadruple bottom. Do you believe in quintuple bottoms? Because they're not really a thing. Typically, uh, like I said before, if, if you don't, if you don't get your double bottom, triple's pretty unlikely. Never really heard of a quad or a quintuple. So now that we've tested this area so many times and we've tried to bounce multiple times and those bounces just get killed uh, and this bounce even failed to test the old bounces high, um, it looks like we're just ready to, to break down here, especially looking at, at that weekly bearish engulfing. So either we miraculously find support here and something else is going on and we're still in some sort of more confusing triangle uh, or we just take out these lows pretty soon here, uh, early next week possibly, and we finally start heading down and getting on with it. So we'll have to see what happens next week, but uh, definitely favoring a bearish outcome here, and uh, I would say significantly lower prices are likely ahead here at this point. Uh, also just uh, to reiterate here, uh, definitely use this, most recent high, that 2708.54, that's an area to define your risk against in a bearish trade. If we get above that, uh, we'll have to consider that something else is going on that we're not coming down right away. But currently, uh, everything is lining up uh, for a bearish outcome. So we'll check in next week as, as things play out. All right, Serial Trader signing off.